Welcome everybody to another episode of the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we're gonna be dealing with the Porsche. For some of the viewers that are new, we've got this Porsche, it's a 2014, and we are making it all electric. All wheel drive, all electric, 900 horsepower. So we have the front motor that is all mounted, and we've got some custom axle shafts. Everything's ready to go up front. In the back, we have nothing. We've got the motor, we even made a motor mount. We've got to still fabricate the battery box and a couple other things. We did recently though make this totally awesome bumper, completely 3D printed. And that's part of the plan is we're gonna give this Porsche its own new design and look. Today what we're gonna be focusing on is the wing. Let's get to it. For today's sponsor, we have air compressor from Ettenwolf. Comes with a nice carrying case. Charging cable, valve stem adapter. Look at that, that looks really nice. So this has a 1000 lumen light. Strobe, slower strobe, and back off. So wow, that is a very strong light, be great for camping. So it also, this is where you charge it, but this is also where you can discharge it. So meaning it acts like a battery bank and you can charge your phone. Comes with a 45 watt fast wall charger. It's got both a high pressure as well as a high volume inflation. And you can set the exact pressure and it'll turn off automatically. It's got a 19.2 amp hour battery. The duty cycle is 100%, so you don't need any cool down, you can just use it all the time. And it can do anything from small inflatables all the way up to giant truck tires. That's insane, 160 PSI. So we're gonna go with car. So here's my daily driver. This back tire always has a slow leak. So we're pretty close to 30. We'll set it at 35 and see how quickly this goes. <laughs> Very nice. It is also in-car charging capable. High volume inflation is great for things like air mattresses, rafts, so things that you need a lot of air for. And it comes with all the adapters. So right now I've got links and coupons that'll get you about $60 off. So go in the video description, pick up yours today. So Ian is a longtime viewer and he reached out to me and he's got his own design studio. It's called IJ Design Studio. And with his help, we've created a new design. Part of that design we've already created with the bumper. So we have some pretty exotic plans for the car. We're planning on some active aero, both in the front and the rear. And the wing, the plan is to have, we'll call it a race mode where the wing can extend up and then also uh, pivot. So kind of act like a air brake as well as just being up and providing a lot of downforce. So with that being said, we've got the wing design. Now it's time to print. All right, well, the time has come. This other large form 3D printer was a loner. So this was never mine. It was something that was very nice to have. Um, the company partnered with me and allowed me to keep it for several months while I printed lots of large panels. Now it's time they need it back. So it's gonna be going away, but we do have another printer that we're setting up. All right, it is all in there. Can't see very well, but it's in there. Nothing broke, everything's intact. So we're just gonna go ahead and put up the ramp. We'll be good to go. If you watch my videos, you see that I have enjoyed using that 3D printer quite a bit, just for little mock-ups and even some big parts. The big 3D printer is gone. So you might be wondering, what are you gonna do without that huge printer? Well, let me show you what we got. So I reached out to Creality to see if they could help me out. Here is what they had to offer. All right, this is my new 3D printer. So this is Creality's K1 Max. Its print bed is, I think, 300 by 300 by 300. Yeah, this thing is humming. All right, here is the first part that is done that I've designed and printed. So I will say this has a camera in the corner, so I get to record all the builds and get to show you guys. As far as printing parameters, Infill, I did 5% and I did the lightning. For the wall loops, I did four walls and I did tree supports. The parts actually came out looking really good. I mean, really buttery smooth. The only times they didn't is if I had to switch uh, filament in the middle, I could usually tell where that happened. There's a little line. Um, the only other challenge I had is um, I'll call it delamination, meaning the first layer looked great, but when I'd come back an hour later, some of the corners looked like they had maybe peeled up a little bit. So for all those uh, professional 3D printer people, please uh, let me know in the comments how to avoid the corners peeling up. We have all the 3D prints done for the wing. 
So I'm going to lay them all out, uh, see if I can figure out which order they go in, and we'll put them together. So the parts look so good. I mean, just smooth as can be. I actually feel bad if I touch it because I get like fingerprints on it, but they look so good. So unlike last time, we actually added some holes and dowels. So these should pin together and go together. At least let's hope so. For the rear wing, it's a wing, meaning it really is like an airfoil shape. So basic airfoil design and um, aerodynamics. So basically you've got kind of a longer path above than below. And so basically as the air kind of joins, it creates kind of a natural low and high pressure area that creates lift, or in our case, it's gonna create downforce. And the reason why you want downforce is if you're going through a corner, um, having a lot more pressure gives you a lot more grip so you can take those corners a little bit faster. All right, I'm trying to figure out the best way to, I'm gonna call it clamp it, because anytime you use any adhesive or any joining method, you kinda of wanna get things pretty tight. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and do this ratchet strap around the table and kinda of clamp on top. We'll see how good that can work because some of the bases are not like level, they're slanted, so we'll see. Also for bonding, I'm just gonna try this um, JB Weld. Just a general purpose epoxy. I think I'm using it because uh, I'll call it the setup time is kind of right in the sweet spot for me. So like maybe five minutes before things start to set up. And then it's also a pretty good, pretty good epoxy, pretty good adhesive. I've tried some test pieces. Um, some of the other ones just set too quickly or take too long. So I'm just gonna try this one. So we're gonna do this one, it goes like this, but as you can see, it's quite an angle on the top. So we're not gonna be able to kind of like use a strap or anything. So I'll probably just hold it by hand. Go horizontal, not vertical.
I guess I just hold it for a while. All right, there it is. It is all complete now. Um, I do have some other panels that go underneath that'll actually fasten the wing to the car. So I'm printing those now, but this is all together. Looks really good, really sharp. All right, we also have these pieces. These are the ones that actually mount the wing. So it's gonna be mounted with kind of four bolts and then one kind of main bolt. So four bolts to the wing, one kind of main um, bolt that will go onto the actuator. We'll also have the ability to kind of uh, tilt this. So tilt it, you know, up or down. Kind of looks like devil horns or something. But basically these are the attachment points. Just like that. So you got one on either side and that will allow the wing to be pushed up into position and then also out, allow it to tilt. So 3D print, I'm just printing out a PLA. Again, I'm not looking to make these part of the final product. Uh, just something quick and easy to get me the right shape. So the plan with all this 3D printing is I'm gonna try and get the shape, the exact shape that I want, and then I'll make some fiberglass molds and go for carbon fiber. So I will go ahead and put this on the car so you can see, but basically this is kind of gonna be sitting over the back end, just as it is right here. And the way that this will work is It'll, it can sit down kind of right on the bumper, or we're gonna have two linear actuators that kind of push this up, um, maybe a foot or 18 inches. So it'll sit kind of like a high rear wing. We're also playing on a mechanism that will actually tilt this kind of like air brakes or put it very flat like a drag reduction system. Here the wing is in place. Again, it tucks up nicely to the bumper. You can see there's probably a couple places where I'll say the panel gap is good. And then a couple places where it probably needs some help. And I don't know um, which piece we didn't quite bond correctly. Like if, if this one needs to go like tilt up a little bit, probably. Um, but anyway, this is why I didn't want to just print the mold is I need to do some shaping and some body filling and stuff to get these to look just right before we go to a mold and then carbon fiber. Another thing people mention like, hey, this is, makes it look a lot longer. Um, it is not pushed up all the way. So you can see here kind of that is supposed to be right against the wheel. So we've got maybe nine inches or so where it needs to go forward. I can't quite do that yet because I need to essentially cut um, this body panel but I'm not gonna do that quite yet. Basically this piece is going to be joined against this piece. So like I said, it's about nine, 10 inches away. Um, so that'll get sucked up, but that's looking really good. I'm gonna try and get uh, something, maybe just PVC pipe or something to show what it looks like with the wing up. This is kind of in its down position. I don't know, maybe up like that. And then it can tilt forward to do the air brake. And then go, go back down. As you can see, 3D printing is becoming more and more a part of what I do in my shop. So I don't have as much experience as a lot of you, but uh, the little experience I do, this happens to be a pretty good 3D printer. It prints really fast and I think it's got pretty good quality. Overall though, I've been really pleased. Um, this printer is super fast. Um, I kind of call it silky smooth parts. I mean, the finish just looks really, really good. So if you guys are looking for a 3D printer, this is the Creality K1 and I'll leave a link in the video description below. A comment about aerodynamics. Um, I have worked with AirShaper. They've got software that will do incredible things and show you all the drag forces, where your flow lines will separate from the car, creating extra drag. It'll tell you where you've got lift or where you've got downforce. I have used this on some of the designs. There is a trade-off though. So the most aerodynamic cars are not the most aesthetic cars. So there is a slight trade-off between things that look really cool and things that are perfectly aerodynamic. So we're trying to get a good blend of both. That's gonna do it for this episode. We were able to 3D print a wing, get it in place with the Porsche. Things are looking really good. Um, I do have more Porsche content for you coming. If you are new to the channel, we've got a couple different builds going on. The Porsche is kind of more of a personal project, but we do have some customer cars. 
I'm trying to make this YouTube slash car business be my full-time job. So thank you for tuning in. Every little bit helps. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That'll do it for this time. See you next time. Every time. Come on, buddy.